a saw, dudes. Absolutely beast, bringing you three races today on fours of seven. So these three are in the multiplayer uh, hopper, the hypercar hopper that they just released, which is um, a lot of really cool cars like the Porsche 918 Spider, which I'm driving, uh, which I hate, but I'll get to that. Uh, the Lambo uh, Sesto Elemento, uh, which seems to be the car that everybody's using. Uh, there's also McLaren, there's Aston Martin Vulcans, uh, which I wish I could drive, but I think there's something that I have to do special to unlock that because I don't have access to that yet. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, these are just a couple races, so I, I brought you guys these races. These are not uh, Zondas are in here too. These are not good races, I will say. Uh, because I don't drive in this class very often, and this car especially is super non-competitive in here. So, as much as I drive and as much as I play, um, within about 30 minutes of using a car, I should be able to be competitive. Um, and this is the second day that I've raced this car, and uh, I'm just non-competitive with it. So I can tell just immediately from the lap times and stuff I was getting with it that it's just non-competitive. And so... Uh, I will be changing it for something else. I just don't have the credits to buy something right now. Uh, and it was so bad tonight that, uh, well, I'm a pretty stubborn person. So when I start doing not well with a car like that, I want to keep driving it so I can get better and better. And eventually find the limit of the car and, and make sure that it's not just me. Because you know, I don't want to go spend money I don't need to spend to get a new car. But um, it became clear after the race on Bathurst, which is the next one, um, that this is, an, is a non-competitive car in this class. And I mean, I'm pretty sure it's clear from what I'm racing because just, and this is a terrible turn. I thought I was going to flip the car actually right there. But, I mean, you, you can just tell. I, I drive enough to be able to tell. And pretty much from the first few races, I could tell that this was not the right car to be driving in here. Um, now, obviously, the 918 Spider is a halo car for Porsche. And it's a technical genius of a car. Um, I remember seeing a early prototype of this car uh, at SEMA. I mean, I wasn't there, obviously, but SEMA is like an auto show they have in California. and Or it might be in Las Vegas, actually. I can't remember now, now that I think about it. I was thinking maybe uh, Monterey Car Week is where I saw it, maybe, uh, which is definitely in California. And uh, basically, it was a... I don't, I don't remember exactly what they called it, but it was like a race car, and it actually had a flywheel sitting in the passenger seat, where the passenger seat would be. Um, and they were talking about this, like, energy recovery system, you know, similar to, like, what a F1 car has, KERS system, the kinetic energy recovery system, which basically allows them to uh, take the spinning of the engine and convert that into electrical power, uh, like when you come off a of power, for example, or if you're braking or something like that. Um, and I remember thinking, like, man, that's a pretty outlandish idea, Porsche, and then, well, here we are with the 918, and this was, you know, six years ago, maybe, I saw that, six, seven years ago, I saw that. Um, and then now, you know, now there's this, uh, but anyway, so it's like a halo car for Porsche and it's an incredible car, uh, four wheel drive, electric, uh, electric hybrid. So you have all your torque immediately at zero RPM. So the launches on this car are brutal. You, you can see what happens in this next race. Um, it's just absolutely brutal. So, uh, you basically like I've been hitting people in the back, um, been slamming into the back of people because it's all-wheel drive and it's electric power so the electric power gets you up and going immediately then it has a twin turbo v8 so check this out watch how hard this launch is i had to just completely get off the gas more than twice so that i could avoid hitting these guys so i'll let you guys hear how sweet this thing sounds it's a twin turbo v8 this is so sweet. screams huh so i mean it's a good sounding car um and the acceleration and speed are pretty high the acceleration is like 9.8 which is way up there 10 is the max and most other cars in this class like even the the cars that are competitive are in the mid to low nines so this thing has incredible acceleration and the speed's 8.0 which means i could probably hit like 210 in it um i believe the the stock top speed of the 918 is about 218 or something like that 215, 218, somewhere in there. So, it, I mean, it goes real fast. Um, but, uh, just, I'm used to cars that have more grip. So, the handling, I mean, as you can see right there. 
man. I didn't even go. All I did was drop the third. I didn't even drop the second gear, and I completely lost the back end, which just doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm just used to driving cars with more grip and more downforce. I heard a quote. I don't remember who the quote was from. It was like a secondhand quote. It's from some race car driver or something. Um, and what they said is, you know, what you're searching for in a car is the front end grip because uh, any respectable driver can manage the back end with their foot. Meaning, you know, with the gas, you can easily manage how much the tire slide there is and stuff like that. So for me, uh, four wheel drive cars are horrific for this, this high level of racing. You know, if you're talking like lower stuff, like a, even in the classes with like the Subarus and, and stuff like that, and even some of the lower classes, like maybe even S class, like it's not completely terrible. Um, as much as I don't like it, but you get a tremendous amount of push and understeer when you're coming into a corner on power, when you're trying to exit a corner on power, and there's just a ton of understeer. See, like that, I had to lift off and steer harder because I was going to go out. Um, and it's just, it bothers me. It really does. It, it just, it, it ruins the whole driving experience for me, so I'm really against all-wheel drive cars uh, for that reason. Again, lower power cars, lower tier cars, absolutely. You know, extended grip. And, you know, of course, there's a practicality in mind. Like, if you think of Porsche, um, not only are their cars extremely refined and really fast and, and sporty, um, but they're also very uh, daily driver friendly. And uh, the 918 is really no exception. I mean, if you think about, not that you would want to drive a million dollar car in the winter time, but you could. I mean, you could throw some different tires on there and drive it. It's all wheel drive. And, you know, you wouldn't have to, wouldn't have to worry about any sort of issues, you know, uh, spinning the tires and stuff like that. It'd be relatively, you know, tame. Um, but I just, I mean, I, I don't like it. I, I don't, I don't like it for the racing aspect of it. Um, and plus, it adds a bunch of weight to the car. Not that that really affects me as much in this scenario, but just in general, adds a bunch of weight to the car. You've got to actually have the, you know, drivetrain components and differential and stuff up in the front. Uh, which takes up a ton of space. You know, you think about like Lamborghinis in the front have basically no trunk space or no boot space for those of you not in the United States. But, you know, it's just, I don't know. I mean, the, this car sounds mean and the acceleration, it pulls really hard. And I'm, it's, I, I love it in that sense. Um, but not super crazy about the looks and the handling is just not good at all. And, and as I said, you know, the reason I put this video up, I, I, I like to bring you guys entertaining races, so I want to bring you stuff, you know, where I'm racing well. But in this case, I mean, I didn't really have another option. This, this is, these are all the races that I could do with these. Um, and it just, you know, I wanted to show you what it's like to be able to be non-competitive in a class. And th again, this is coming from someone like me who races a good amount. Um, and I'm, I'm relatively fast. I generally can beat, you know, two-thirds of the people that are in these multiplayer lobbies. Um, so as you can see there, I missed another shift. Uh, that's become a real issue for me on that exact turn in that exact spot. And so I'm, I'm starting to think that there, there's something about the turn before that, that left-right turn. There must be something about that that makes me shift my grip slightly on my controller, um, which means that I'm not quite hitting the right uh, shift because it happens with all types of cars that I've been driving on here, and I, I don't really understand why. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, coming and race a class that I don't race very often, and to drive a car that um, I own, and it's the only car I own in this class, and so I don't have enough credits to buy any of the higher end cars. Um, but it became apparent to me within a few races that this was not a competitive car to be driving in here. And uh, this just sort of cemented that. I, I thought that the previous time, and I thought like I'm gonna have to buy something different. Um, but I decided to come in here and race again uh, to try to earn, you know, you don't really earn much money in multiplayer, so I probably should have just skipped it and gone straight to the career. But um, honestly, I mean, it, it sucks. The car just sucks. I'll just, I'll, to put it lightly, it just, it's terrible. It's non-competitive, and it, it's embarrassing for me to be in here and driving like this. They're not so much that you guys get to see it. I'm, you know, that's that's fine, whatever. Um, but I mean, like, to be in this race um, and to be racing with these people, it's it's embarrassing because, you know, the uh, the origin of my name, Absolutely Beast, that's my gamer tag. I, I, I chose that because I li I, I've i said that before about stuff. It's like, oh, man, that, that car is absolutely beast i didn't i didn't ever consider the fact that i I, did, I wasn't saying that about myself i'm not saying that i'm a beast i'm not saying that like i'm really awesome and i'm really great I'm not I'm, I'm much more humble than that but uh i realize other people take it that way so especially with a gamer tag like this to, to be in a race like this and you know pe people know me on the game i recognize people there's there's people that i run into who i've raced with on other games before and they know 
that I'm relatively fast and clean. Um, so to come in here and be in sixth place or eighth place or you know tenth or twelfth place, or to be crashing out in the first corner and to just be getting like this race, you, you can see I'll show you right here when we finish the race. And that guy hit me, man. And that's that's kind of what really just made me tired of it. You know, it's like first of all, you shouldn't be following me that closely. But second of all, if I have to break that early, if you can break so much later than that, that he's slamming into the back of me with that car, then like it's not the car for me. So I'll show you my lap times. Look at how much slower I am than everybody here. 204 and look at the guys around me 58 58 58 56 so most of the people around me were running at least six seconds faster now i race a lot that's too far that's too much that's a wide wide gap and so that to me just completely 100 percent confirms beyond a reasonable doubt that it's absolutely the car that's the issue um, so it was so bad that I, I never do this because it's a waste because I, I rented this car Which means I gained no XP and no credits. So it's a total waste, but I just thought dude this, this Porsche is so bad I've got to drive something else And so this is me driving the P1 GTR and, and this thing has a mean mean scream to it I'll do the same thing here. I'll let you guys hear it after I take these next two turns because it just screams And uh, I'm taking it a little easy on this first lap because I've never driven this car before. And I'm used to that just terrible Porsche right now. So I'm just trying to take it a little bit slower. Um, but uh, I did some research on the leaderboards. And it looks as if... And I was about to buy this car uh, in like an hour. So I'm sure glad that I looked at the leaderboards because I this car's not really up there. So really it comes down to two cars. So one... There's three cars that uh, the, the Hennessy Venom sort of peppers at the top of all the leaderboards. So I, I checked out 15 or 20 tracks, and the Hennessy Venom was on maybe half of them on the top page, which I love that car. That was one of my favorite cars to drive in the last game and the game before that. But um, honestly, that's not an option for a lobby like this or a class like this. I don't want to have something like that because it's got absolutely raw speed and acceleration, like, like just... And, that, and that's just unfortunate. You know, I mean, that guy's driving a Veneno. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do there, you know. He he had a bad turn, and I had a not great turn. And I ended up hitting him. I mean, I obviously didn't do it on purpose. Um, but the, uh, the Hennessy Venom has raw, just raw, absolutely uncontrollable speed and acceleration. So I don't, I'm not going to pick that for a car that I'm going to be racing in here. You know, maybe for like a Le Mans, like a certain tracks or something. But um, it basically came down to two cars. Either the... Lamborghini Sesto Elemento um, or the Zonda Cinque. So the Sesto Elemento means in Italian sixth element, which it's, you know, the whole car's made out of carbon fiber. There's not even seats in the car. There's just, like, they cut out a part of the tub that is carbon fiber and they put padding in it. So there's literally not even any seats in the car. You're actually sitting in the, t in the you know, uh, carbon monocoque of the car. And then there's no dashboard and there's just, it's, it's a real crazy car. Um, as much as I love that and what it stands for, they did a cool review on it on Top Gear. Richard Hammond got to review it. But as much as I love that car, what it stands for, and how it's just a you know pure minimalistic car, uh, I believe it's all-wheel drive. Um, I could be mistaken. If it's two-wheel drive, I'll, I'm going with that car for sure. But if it's all-wheel drive, I will not for sure. So it's either yes, it's either a, it's a wholehearted yes or a wholehearted no. Um, and so the other alternative is the Zonda uh, Chinke, which uh, I. I am in love with the Zonda. I've had a fascination with the Zonda. I think it's one of the best looking cars ever made. Um, if you see them in that in that cream color or like black with cream, it makes me want to throw up. Um, but other than those two, like I love, love that car. Just the look of it, the sound of it, just what the car is. It's like an art, you know, it's a, it's a work of art. And so have that in there. So there's a Zonda and there's a Zonda R. Now the Zonda R has a little bit better handling and braking, um, but the top speed is much lower, so I feel like um, I could probably get away with the regular Zonda, and most of the stuff that I'm seeing out there is with the Zonda C, which is the Zonda Chinke, so that's just the standard Zonda, and then obviously you can tune it and stuff, and download some tunes so I can make that work. Um, but yes, I think that's probably the car I'll end up with, um, unless, like I said, the Sesto Elemento is a two-wheel drive car, in which case that would be, that'd be the obvious choice, because that's on every single leaderboard. Uh, the only track that, that wasn't completely dominated by Sesto Elementos was... And this guy here, I mean, I don't know what he's doing coming back on the track like that. 
mean, I just, I, that just doesn't make any sense to me. So, I, I mean, not that I hit him on purpose, because I didn't, but, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go out of my way and try to go on the grass to the right or whatever to avoid him, because he's just, I mean, that's not how you re-enter the track if somebody's coming up behind you. So, yeah, I mean, the Sesto Elemento was on every single track, multiple cars on the top 15 in the leaderboards, except for one track, um, and it only had one entry in the top 15, which still says that it can work that way. So, I, I if I can make that car work, I'll do that. Otherwise, it's going to be the sound to see. Uh, and I'll, I'll be getting that probably tomorrow, so I can bring you guys some races with that, and I should be much more competitive in here. So, anyway, I appreciate you guys checking this out. Thanks for being here. Um, if you like my content, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I've been uploading every day, so make sure you check back again soon for another video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you. Appreciate it.